You're about to watch a video that's going to help you pass the CPC exam with flying colors. Hey there, I'm Victoria Moll. I'm a medical coder, auditor, educator, and content creator, and I have helped tons of people pass their CPC exam, and I can help you do the same with this tactic that is a tool that you can put in your tool belt for when you are taking the exam. By the end of this video, you are going to know how to use the process of elimination method for the multiple choice examination. I've had lots of people ask me if I have videos on process of elimination and I have covered it in my full CPC review series. That is a playlist available on my YouTube channel. But today I'm going to focus just on how to use the process of elimination. And we're going to go through some actual examples to show you how there's a lot of questions that you can eliminate to answer answers to pretty quickly. But first, if you haven't even gotten to the CPC exam yet, if you're still looking into how to get into medical coding and you want to take the CPC exam eventually, you definitely want to check out my medical coding masterclass. In the masterclass, I give you this full roadmap of like all of the things you need to know before you get into medical billing and coding and how to find the right training program for you, like what you should be looking for, what credentials you want to prepare for, how you can get training without going into student loan debt, which is super important student student loan debt is the pits and how you could possibly even get a free laptop with your training program but you have to go to the link in my description to sign up for the masterclass today now the CPC exam is the certified professional coder examination. It tests you on professional or what we sometimes refer to as physician services in medical coding. It is 100 questions long. Every question is multiple choice, including those 10 case studies at the end. Those are not coding from scratch. They are all multiple choice for the CPC exam administered by the AAPC and you have four hours to complete the exam. If you're taking it online, they will split it into two two hour sessions. If you are taking it in person, you just have a whole chunk. And if you want to take any breaks, you can, but it's not going to stop the clock when you go on break. I've covered so many different tactics for the CPC exam on this channel. Things like things you don't want to forget on your exam day, chapter specific things. And today I want to focus on speed. I've done some videos on speed before. And today I'm going to focus though on specifically that process of elimination, how you can possibly get through some of those questions faster by eliminating some of those choices. So each question will have four possible answers, A, B, C, or D. So if you can look at those and look at them and kind of figure out, okay, how can I eliminate a couple of possible answers right away? That's going to speed up your time. You're going to spend less time flipping through pages, looking things up. How you do medical coding for certification purposes and how you do it in person is very different, of course, uh, because when you are looking things up, when you're actually working as a medical coder, you're going to be looking up the terms. Sometimes in the exam, though, you're not just going to start with looking out the terms. You're going to look at those options. What are my A, B, C, and D options? What are they asking me? What are they looking for here? And it's easier in some cases to look up the codes themselves first versus looking up the terms and then trying to find the code. So if you can focus first on what are they asking me? What are my options? And then go back and kind of look at some of the things that the, that, that you're trying to pull out from there. Sometimes working backwards a little bit makes a little more sense especially more so with the longer questions, because you don't want to read an entire operative report, underlining, highlighting all kinds of procedural things. And then you find out that the question that they're actually asking you is just on ICD-10 CM codes. But let's take a look at a couple of very pertinent examples, things that are similar to what you might see on your exam. So first we have this question, what is the ICD-10 CM code for a UTI? Now, first and foremost, the important thing is you have to know what a UTI is. A UTI is a urinary tract infection. Sometimes we get that confused with a URI, which is an upper respiratory infection. So UTI is urinary tract infection. Now, if you're familiar with some of your ICD-10 CM code structure, you'll know that your genitourinary conditions start with the letter N. So if we're looking at this right away, we can kind of eliminate two options. 
From a simply strategical standpoint, I think that would be the first thing I would look at, even if I had no idea if the encodes were urinary codes or not, because if it is an encode, you know that you have these two options of encodes. If you eliminate those encodes right away, then you know it's the opposite. It's either A or C, right? But if we look at our just encodes and go, oh yeah, you know, these are urinary codes, we can right away eliminate a and we can eliminate C as options. So we're not even looking at them anymore. So now we only have two potential codes that we might need to look up, N71.9 and N39.0. So we have the option, we can either look at N71.9 or N39.0, or you know your other option is you could just look under the code infection and look under urinary tract and find it that way. Um, and go, oh yeah, it says under infection N39.0. So I've got it down to two codes. I'm eliminating one. Let's say I just want to go with the N71.9. So I would get my ICD-10-CM book and I would look up N71.9. So N71.9, inflammatory disease of the uterus unspecified. That's definitely not it. So at that point, I could even eliminate that as one of my potential options. I could eliminate the N71.9 and then I know it's N39.0. Another option you could do to kind of tackle this question, another strategy, and again, this is not something we would do in our normal daily coding activities. This is a strategy we use just for testing purposes. Say we look up the code infection urinary tract. It tells us that the default code is N39.0 and we look at it and go, yeah, well, what other code could it possibly be? Um, you don't think that there's going to be anything in the tabular list that's going to tell you otherwise. You can select D and then maybe put a little note next to it to like verify it later on if you have time at the end of the exam. Uh, again, this is just a strategy that we can use to save time. So if you are ones that you're like, I'm almost positive that it's gonna be N39.0, I don't wanna waste my time verifying it in the tabular because I know that's the right code, it's the default code that it's going to. You can always just mark it so that if you have extra time at the end of the exam to double check in the, ver in the tabular for that. So on our next example here, it says what diagnosis code or codes is are reported for behavioral disturbances in a patient with early onset Alzheimer's? So we have four options here and let's kind of look at some of the differences that we have in these options. So if we look at our first two here, we have two codes and they end in F02.81. So you can kind of see that here. So this one and this one, G30.8 um, and G30.0, both ending in the F02.81. This one has the F02.81 sequenced first, and this one has just the F02.81. So if I was looking at this and I went, okay, what's the easiest way to kind of process of elimination some of these codes is first and foremost, which comes first? Does the FO2.81 come first or does the G code come first? And does this need a second code here? Cause we don't have one here. And if it does, what are the, what's that potential second code that we need that secondary code. Now, since the G30.0 is repeated here, and here, I'm kind of thinking it's probably more likely to be the right code. I'm thinking maybe starting there. So if I look at my G30.0, so G30.0, if we zoom in here, is showing here that it is the code for Alzheimer's disease, which is what we have here, but it also says behavioral disturbances. And there is a note here to use an additional code to identify and what's listed here. Delirium, dementia with behavioral disturbances or dementia without behavioral disturbances. And if we were to look this up in the alphabetic index under disease and then Alzheimer's early onset, and then with behavioral disturbances, it would tell us there to go to G30.0 and then include the F02.81. But we've kind of shortcut it here, we can see this is Alzheimer's disease. We can see that it says to use an additional code. Additional code means that goes second. So these additional codes go after the G30.0. So G30.0, Alzheimer's disease early onset goes first. And then our with behavioral disturbances, our FO2.81 goes 
second. So right away, we can eliminate that we don't use the FO2.81 on its own. We can eliminate that we don't um, put the F code first, right? We can eliminate those so we don't have to worry about these two. And we can double check the F30.8 and make sure that that's not a more specified code, but it doesn't sound like an F30.8 is actually other Alzheimer's, but we do have the specificity here that says to use the one that is early onset Alzheimer's, which is our G30.0 early onset. You can see that here, it's the early onset. Early onset. So in that case, it's going to be our option B, our G30.0 and our FO2.81. Now let's look at an example that it relates to CPT, but not the codes themselves, the actual guidelines. And I'll tell you how to quickly figure this one out. So anesthesia start times reported at 7.14 a.m. and the surgery began at 7.26 a.m. The surgery finished at 8.18 a.m. and the patient was turned over to the PACU at 8.29 a.m., which was reported as the anesthesia ending time. What is the anesthesia time reported? So even if you don't know the anesthesia guidelines very intimately, looking at this, you can kind of tell the anesthesia start time was reported at 7.14 a.m. So if you're confident about that, you can right away eliminate C and D because they're listing that the start time would be 7.26. And that's when the surgery started, but not necessarily the anesthesia started. So right away, we could eliminate two options there just knowing the start time. But let's say we're looking at this and going, I don't know, is the end time the 8.18 or the 8.29 when they're turned over to pack you? Well, the quickest way to do this is to flip to your anesthesia guidelines. So you need to know where you can find those anesthesia guidelines. They're going to be right at the front of your anesthesia section in CPT. So PACU is the post anesthesia care unit, which means that if we're looking at the guidelines here, we can see that that end time would be when they went to the PACU, which was our 829. So 829, 715, that would mean that this one would be our option B. By the way, if you are enjoying this content and you haven't done so already, I want to highly, highly encourage you to subscribe, hit that notification bell because I post all kinds of helpful content that is great for when you are preparing for certification, when you're looking for your next certification, when you want to know, you know, are people going through the same struggles in medical coding, how to find a job. There's just so much, so much from the wide spectrum of medical billing and coding that you want to make sure that you are getting notified when I post this amazing new content. Now, last one, let's look at another CPT example. A clamp circumcision is performed without dorsal block on a newborn. What CPT code is reported for this service? And if we look at the options, again, we can, we can pretty easily eliminate two just based on the fact that these two have a 52 modifier, and these two do not. 52 is for reduced services. So the first thing we wanna look for is if it's performed without the dorsal block, is there a specific code for performed without dorsal block? Or is there a code that we have to put the 52 modifier on to reduce those services? So here's the two code options. We have 54150 or 60 with or without the 52 modifier. So again, you know, if we know it's 50, we can eliminate these two codes. If we know it needs a modifier 52, we could eliminate A and B. So there's there's a way we can eliminate two pretty quickly. Um, but my, my best tip for this is to tackle it up since 150 and 160 are right next to each other. Like, let's just go right to those codes and look at them, look at the descriptions of them. So we have here circumcision using clamp or other device with regional dorsal penal block or ring block, circumcision, surgical excision, other than clamp device or dorsal slit, neonate. So let's see, what are we looking for? We're performed, performed without the dorsal block. And speak of the devil, modifier 52, what does it say right here? Report 54150 with modifier 52 when performed without dorsal penal or ring block. So we know we need that modifier 52. We also know that this is the right code. So of those options, we're going to pick out RC because we can see, yes, we do need the modifier 52. This one here doesn't have any note about modifier 52. Um, and this fits the description. We're using the clamp circumcision and it's performed. This one isn't with, it's without. So we have to use that modifier 52. 
So there you have it. That's how you can kind of use that process of elimination to think through what is the most likely code. How can we eliminate some of those code options when we're taking the CPC exam? And it will make things much easier for you. So again, this is one of the tools in your tool belt that you can use if you want to help you get through some of those questions on the CPC exam a little bit faster. And of course, if you need more in-depth help with your CPC exam, I have a whole playlist over here that you can check out or you can go to contempocoding.com to buy my CPC review. So what are you waiting for? Get out, study, ace that exam. I will see you in the next video. And until then, just keep on coding on.